Welcome to Little World Shakers, the children's ministry of congregation family. In Little World Shakers, we learn, live, and give. How do we learn? We meet right here every single Sunday at one o'clock for a new message. What do we learn? We learn fascinating stories in God's word. The more we learn, the more we understand these stories, the more wise we become and the better decisions we make. Next, we live. How do we live? We meet directly after the message for our Zoom after party. We play games, we discuss, and most importantly, we have fun together. You don't wanna miss that. And lastly, we give. Every single month in Little World Shakers, we have a new monthly challenge to practice a lifestyle of giving. Be sure to join in these monthly challenges. They're tons of fun and they truly do bless you when you live a lifestyle of giving. There's so much happening in Little World Shakers and we know it can feel hard to keep up with everything. So we hooked you guys up. If you can, grab the closest cell phone to you and text Little World Shaker, all one word, all lowercase, to 94090. Again, that's Little World Shaker to 94090. Text that today and you will receive updates via text message and you won't miss out on any of the fun. You can also follow us at Little World Shakers on Instagram. There you can find our monthly challenges, our monthly memory verses, our stories. Mrs. Fredlin does money mindfulness where she teaches you about money. There's so much good stuff on our Instagram. Be sure to follow Little World Shakers on Instagram. I want to give a warm welcome to all of you who are new today. We are so excited you are here. I am Mrs. Abby, the director of Little World Shakers, and I would love to get to know you. If you can, email me at abby, A-B-I, at congregation.family. It's in the link below. And I would love to get to meet you. Be sure to send me an email, and as soon as I see it, I will respond to you. I can't wait to hear all about you. Now, if you are new, here's how today will work. I will share a story with you. And at the end of the story, be sure to stick around. In the comments section, I will provide a Zoom link so you can join us for our after party right here on Zoom in the comfort of your home. And we have so much fun together. We play games, we talk, we laugh, and most importantly, we have a good time together. So be sure to stick around to the end. Click the link and follow us into the Zoom after party after today's message. Whew. Hey everyone, I am so excited to be here with all of you today. If you're wondering why I'm out of breath and I have this headband and my workout jacket on, it's because I just got done training. I was training because this month in Little World Shakers, we are going to be doing a 5K. You might ask, Miss Abby, what in the world is a 5K? A 5K is three mile long run. A lot of us don't even wanna think about running one. But yes, there's three miles in a 5K race. Don't worry, little world shakers. If running is not your thing and you're like, Miss Abby, I am not showing up this month because I don't wanna run. We're not actually gonna run. We're gonna have some fun this month as we train for a 5K because there's no better way to live out our commitment. Sure, you can run a 5K with no training and you might pass the finish line. But most people I've heard talk about how they come up with all these blisters on their feet and all this pain and ache in their body that they didn't have or wouldn't have if they trained. If you make a plan and put it into practice, you may enjoy and actually have more energy as you're running the race and you might have fun. So I've made a plan for all of us to train. Now we're gonna put it into practice. There's a lot that goes into training for a race, especially a 5K. First off, you need some big time commitment. 
Did you know the Apostle Paul actually talked about running in the Bible? It's true. Paul mentioned running as an example for a different kind of training. He wrote about it in one of his letters to the church in Corinth. Check it out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, Paul says, In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Of course, Paul was talking about more than just running, but in order to fully understand what he really meant, we gotta know what it takes to run a race. First, you need a plan. A plan will help you know what you need to do each day leading up, and leading up to the race. A plan will help you know what to do each day leading up to the race. For example, you might set aside some days to practice running. Some days you practice cross training. Some days to focus on agility and endurance. All of these different words mean that you're gonna focus on training a different muscle part of the body. Next, you gotta put your plan into action. You gotta move. You might do short runs or fast runs or maybe some really slow longer runs. You might run on the treadmill at the gym or outside on a track. However you choose, you have to move. And you can't forget to fuel your body up as you're doing all this training. When you're running for longer periods of time like this, you need to carb up things like vegetables or pasta or rice. You gotta fuel your body up. You've gotta drink up too. Before you even start running, you gotta stay hydrated. And you can't forget those super important rest days my favorite. You might need to do some stretching, some days some rolling out your muscles, or even some icing. We know those legs get sore. The important thing is to let your body rest and repair in between days of training. Wow, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? As you can see, running takes a lot of work and practice. It's like what Paul said, run in a way that will get you the prize. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24. But remember, Paul was talking about something way more important that we need to train for. Let's see what else he wrote in his letter to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. What Paul was telling the Jesus followers in Corinth is the same thing he's telling all of us who follow Jesus today. He was telling them that life is like one big race. We're all running this race and it's not so much about crossing the finish line. It's a journey that we choose to follow Jesus and live his way. If we want to run the race well, we have to set our focus on what matters most. And we know what that is because Jesus told us in the word. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all of your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what's most important. That's the purpose of our race to love God and love other people. Just like we have to train to run a race, there are things that we can do to train and build our relationship with God. We have to have a plan, we have to practice. It won't look like the same plan as running a race, but it is a plan. For starters, we have to hear from God. How do we hear from God? We have to each take quiet time and not do anything, shut down all our distractions, all the electronic devices, and get really quiet by ourselves and have time with just us and God. We also have to pray, we have to talk to God, we have to tell God what we feel, what's on our heart, and share our worries, share our the things we're thankful for. That is what we do in prayer. And when we share our heart with God and we take moments, as we first mentioned, to get still and get quiet, we start to hear God more in that quiet time. Prayer is a way to really connect with God. Another important part of our plan is talking. Talking with others about God. This way we can learn more about God 
but we can also help others learn too. And finally, if we want to run our race well, we have to live a life for God in everything we do. We can put what we believe into action. Practicing loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves, and loving other people is putting that into action and living out what God intended us to do. Remember, Jesus said the most important thing was to love God and love others. We put that into practice by following our training plan we just discussed. We can hear from God, pray and talk to Him, talk about Him with others, and live for Him every day. When you do these things, you live out what Paul talked about in his letter. Here's what we need to remember today. Keep practicing what matters most. Thankfully, God is with you as you train. You can ask God to help you as you're practicing loving God and loving others. Let's pray and talk to God now. Dear God, thank you for giving us a plan that helps us to train and practice building our relationship with you. We want to run our race well. We want to do what matters most to you. We want to love you, God, and we want to show our love for you and how we treat other people and how we love other people. So help us, God, to get still, to get quiet and spend time with you so we can hear you. Help us to pray and talk with you, God. Help us to talk about you to others and help us to live out your intentions in our life and everything we do. We thank you, God, that you've given us everything we need to walk this plan out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's time for Wise Eyes. This story was so special today. I hope that you all got something out of it as I did sharing it with you. And now let's dig into the wisdom of it all. As we all get a little more wiser, be sure to put your wise eyes on. Jesus taught us what matters most in life, to love God and to love others. But it's not easy and it takes practice. Keep practicing what matters most. Say that with me. Keep practicing what matters most. When we follow the training plan we talked about today, it helps us to do what matters most, to love God and love others every single day. Remember, that means we hear from God, we pray to connect with God, we talk with others about what God is doing in our life, and we live in a way that honors God and points others in the direction to God. That might seem like a lot, but check this out. We do it in Little World Shakers every Sunday. And for all of you who show up, you're already doing it. We take time to hear from God. We share the story and hear what God is telling us. We take time to pray each week after our story. We take time to talk together about God. Even me, I'm training with all of you. And this whole month, we're gonna keep breaking down this plan. So be sure to keep showing up and you'll get even more about how to run this race well. This month, we do have a brand new memory verse from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse eight. Here it is. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come, and that is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. All right, if you're ready, today has been great, but it is time for us to continue practicing what matters most in our Zoom after party. So be sure to click the link and follow me over to our Zoom after party. Remember, Little World Shakers, next week we will be meeting back in person May 9th, next Sunday. We can't wait to have you. Be sure to RSVP. Have your parents RSVP you online at congregation.family and make sure you're registered before you come next Sunday. We look forward to seeing you. 9.30 to 10.15 will be our check-in time. All right, we'll see you all next week. If today was your first time in Little World Shakers, we hope you had a blast. We have a gift for you. Be sure to text Little World Shaker to 94090 to receive your gift today. We will mail it to you. We look forward to meeting you, to having you as a part of Little World Shakers family. Thank you so much for tuning in today.